Welcome to the MFR Coaches Podcast, where we talk about how you can create a six-figure MFR practice. I'm your host, Heather Hommel. Not only have I been practicing MFR for 11 years, I'm also a life and business coach, especially for MFR therapists. My goal is for you to understand how to get fully booked, how to talk to your clients, and how to make sure they understand what's possible for them with MFR treatment. I'm here to help you stop under earning, overworking, and burning out. I'll lend support so you can create the MFR practice you've always wanted. Learn how you can do it too, even if you live in a tiny town, and even if you're just starting out, and even if you've ran your practice for years. Let's go. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the MFR Coaches Podcast. I'm joined today by Angie DeBorgia. Angie operates DeBorgia Physical Therapy and myofascial release in Baltimore, Maryland. She's been specializing in private practice in MFR since December of 2022. She is a student of mine in my coaching programs and most recently has been a member inside Beyond 100K Mastermind. And I wanted to interview her today and share with you her second offer that she has been working on and getting ready to put into the world. So Angie, welcome back to the podcast. How are you doing? Great. Thank you for having me, Heather. Happy to be here. (laughs) Fun to check in with you. It's been a few months since you've been on the show. And I think when you were on before, you were a member of the foundations program. What's changed since then to now? What has changed is I'm ready for the next level of growth, but need to, you know, um, finalize what that looks like for me and what still provides value to the world while not overwhelming my lifestyle, but having it still be worthwhile to pursue. So that's in a nutshell, what, what I've been working on in the mastermind group. Yeah. So when you came in, you had your website set up where people had to call you and kind of go through this funnel in order to get an appointment with you. And we've been working on your mindset around that to make it easier for clients to book with you without needing to talk to you. And at first you were like pretty freaked out by that. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me what it's like now? Well, now I finally have the ability to book on my website directly. Like it goes to my pricing page and my schedule. And it's available there and I, they still can book a call, but they have more visible access to booking online without speaking to me first or as a client coming back, going there and being able to book in the future. And, you know, it's still a work in progress. I could probably have that button a little more visible on my website, but I have a lot more clients existing that are using that site and it's great. Like, Oh, like if the, just the fact that they're not, I mean, maybe because they know, because I'm telling them, you know, book online. I'm, you probably want to make some appointments now because it's going to fill up. You know, I just would hate for you not to be able to get in when you want to get in. And exactly. I feel like <laughs> just taking that little sentence at the end of the session more of the time than I had been at all, which was none, that it's starting to like say, oh, I'm filling my schedule without having to be like, oh, but I better send an email out. So I, without thinking that it was going to really work, I have several clients that are like regularly booking more appointments without talking to me ahead of time or messaging me or emailing me, which is like really nice. (laughs) Yeah. And you even have people that are new to you that are booking without needing that phone call. It's nice that you have that as an option, right? But I think I was trying to explain to you in one of the coaching calls where I was like, listen, if I have to talk to you first and I have no idea what your price is or like when I'm going to be able to get in, I'm probably going to click off and go find somewhere where I can book online because I don't want to have to talk to you. I want to, if I'm thinking this is what I want to do and I land on your site, like I already am ready to buy. So let me buy from Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. And that's refreshing to hear because all the different trainings I've been through, it's like, you know, you want them to apply to work with you. Like you don't work with everybody. And so that's, I had been kind of like ingrained in me that it has to be an application funnel. And honestly, I'm, I'm getting more and more okay with it being either way, because 
I'm getting people that book a call, but they've already looked at the pricing page anyway. And it's just more of an educated call, you know, and it's great because it's more meaningful for both parties, honestly. So, um, so yeah, I'm good whether or not they use the online booking without speaking to me first. That makes me excited, but I like that they can still book a call as well. Yeah. And I think there'll become a time where you are so busy in your practice and so confident in the client that actually books with you that you'll run out of the space to talk to clients because you'll be so busy just serving in the the hands-on realm and it will be okay. Yeah. I think you're getting closer. I'm getting closer. <laughs> closer to that. But it's, I just, I want to celebrate the breakthrough in that because it's still a exclusive service that you're offering, even if people don't have to be vetted and they don't have to apply to work with you ahead of time, because we don't want to make it so exclusive that we make it really hard for people who would be incredible clients for us to get the service that we offer. Right. And it's like, there's a certain frustration level or a certain level of things I'm willing to do and not do. And if, if I land on a website and I cannot figure out certain questions, like I'm gone right? A certain answers to my questions. Like one is the price, two is how to book. And three, the other third, the third thing for me is like, I don't want to have to call you. I like that as an option, but I think that I'm smart enough to figure out if this is something that I want for myself without having to do that. So I appreciate that you were willing to try that out because I know it was scary. <laughs> yeah. Cause I wasn't that booked out really. I mean, so I was like, okay. Well, you were stressed out too, though, being two weeks booked out, right? Yes. Stressful for you. Yes. And now I'm, I'm actually four to six weeks booked out. Mm -hmm. And, and not, how is your stress level with that? I'm, I'm not stressed like I was. Cause it's at the point where it's like, I cannot offer you anything. You have to, you know, it's almost like you have to come back in October. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. I wish I could, yeah. I could see you sooner. I really do. But I, I can't see you until October. So I recommend that you make several visits in addition to your first visit, just because I want you to be able to see, be seen if you, if it's, you know, a good fit for us to work together. Mm -hmm. And then they, and I say, how does that sound? And they said, yeah, that makes sense. And then, so we booked out maybe one, two or three more visits after. So that was the first time that kind of call went and that went fine. So and even when you're booked out, people still want to buy from you. And I think it d creates more urgency for clients. And it also shows you how much demand you've created for this to continue to be a thing. It's not a fluke where you're just kind of fully booked and then not fully booked and then fully booked and not fully booked. You've kind of, you've done that phase. And now you're to the phase where you're just always going to be booked unless for some reason you stop selling, right? You get scared and you, you don't tell people that you're so fully booked and you, you know, you quit telling people how to show up to get treatment with you. But at the end of the day, we're all responsible for whether or not we're fully booked. And a lot of it has to do with those conversations we have at the end of treatment and what we expect clients to do on their own, right? Rebook, commit, decide they're coming back in. And we tell them what it is that they need and what it is that we recommend. No more of this like, oh, you trust your body. So you just come when you want. And much more of like, here's where you are. Here's where you want to be. And here's how we get there. And we bridge that gap and we tell them exactly how many visits to book at a time. Yeah, I think I'm also working on that is at the end of each session, one, praising them and thanking them, but praising them for whatever progress they've made or commitment they've done or, you know, improvements they've made. And then also at the end, like what we're still working on, like it's gotten better, but we're, you're really still tight in this area. And I don't know if, if you remember the asymmetry that I found or, you know, things like that. So I'm trying to explain to them what we're working on and why, and that they're making great progress. So. I love that so much. Yeah. Your clients are lucky that you're willing to do this work because they're going to reap the benefits of a therapist who has a managed mind and who is really working to serve their highest interest and their needs 
versus like, how can I just make more money? Which I think a lot of people get confused about when they see maybe that like the mastermind is like how to scale to 250K and beyond and how to, how to go beyond 100K. It's not necessarily about making that money. It's not, not about making the money, but we don't make that money unless we serve our clients and unless we can talk to our clients and tolerate the things that they do or say, and we don't need them to show up in a certain way in order for us to be safe to make those offers. Like We create that safety. We get the coaching in the container so that we can always show up for th- those clients exactly where they're at, meet them where they're at. And then if anything is off for you, you come back to coaching and you work it out in coaching so that you can do it again for the next client, anything that's sticky or confusing. Yeah. And I think you've done a really good job of showing up for yourself in that way, where it's like you have a client interaction that didn't go how you wanted it to go. And you come and you just dissect it. Like you you say exactly what happened and we dissect it. And then you know exactly what to do differently next time. And you've had some pretty quick turnarounds where you were feeling like kind of yucky about a client interaction or worried that they didn't like you or didn't like MFR or they were, you know, not getting the result. And you were able to ask really curious questions and really get to the bottom of it without making it about you at all and quickly have that client opt into more treatment and get what's really available. I, it's funny because you don't know if it if it's going to happen or not. Like I know I had one patient who came for two visits and then didn't, and I felt kind of bad about that. But then I had another patient that seemed a little bit on the fence and it wasn't like a, you know, hole in the wall. I mean, it wasn't totally comfortable and at ease, but she didn't book right away either, even though I recommended it, but she came later and booked online two visits. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of like, okay, (laughs) you do what you feel is best for the patient and then, you know, if they didn't want to come back, then, oh, well, you know. And it almost always works out when we do that, when we know when to like release, like we can tell the client all of the information and everything that they, all of the options available to them. And then we trust that they know how to make really good decisions. And if we don't trust that, we just continually ask questions to make sure that it's not us, like not giving enough information for them to make those determinations. I I think the hard part too, when challenging is when I have a patient that's new for me that I'm not sure how much improvement she's going to get because she's trying to avoid surgery for her thumb and Mm -hmm. the other side already went bad. So it's kind of like trying to navigate how to answer her questions. Like, when is this going to (laughs) work? And I said, I honestly, I'm not sure, but I know that you have the best potential for improvement with this approach than anything else that you've achieved. Yeah. And even if she needs to end up having surgery, she could still see you post-surgically and have an even better result. I think, you know, as someone who had to have back surgery, I opted to have back surgery after lots of MFR that I was not progressing. And I kind of had like that crisis of modality of like, oh my God, like if, MFR can't help me. Like, what have I done wrong versus like, actually nothing's gone wrong. Sometimes you need surgery and thank God we have it. And my MFR therapist was really, really patient with me. I have worked with multiple MFR therapists. They were all so patient with me and so willing to, to encourage me and not let me think that anything had gone wrong. Right. They were like, you're going to be set up for the best surgical outcome because you've done all of this work, because you've invested all of this time and money into this care. And then afterwards, like we'll be here for you for everything afterwards until you feel a hundred percent. And if you have a setback, like we're going to be here for you. And I think just knowing that and having someone else tell me that it was, it's going to be okay. Even if you do need surgery, I wasn't failing out of MFR because I needed the surgery. Mm -hmm. And I think when we can look at it like that as therapists, like, well, I'm going to get you as far as we can go. And when you decide that like surgery is your next option, like that's going to be okay too. It's not giving up. Mm -hmm. Because I do can trust. I had a lot of self-talk about like, was I like an MFR dropout by having (laughs) surgery? Have I failed? Right. And like how much pressure we put on ourselves as therapists and even clients to like, succeed in this modality. Sometimes human bodies just like you're, 
you might need surgery. I, it was actually a relief when a patient told me that they do need surgery because I was wondering why his hip was not, I'm like, oh, I don't know why. And finally they did standing weight bearing x-rays and that showed his hip. And so it's always almost like a relief, like, okay, I, at yeah. least, you know, all right, I'm optimizing him for surgery and he's going to do so well. It's like, I'm excited that, you know, he's continuing to come and, you know, hopefully his recovery should be so much like as smooth as it possible. Yeah. And I think too, like being able to refer people out and like refer them to their physician when you take them so far and they're still not progressing, being like, Hey, nothing's going wrong, but you might want to get images of this. Like, let's just take this a little deeper and see what's going on just to clear up any, any kind of question. So if you could get even better with some other help. So Mm -hmm. I think that's really smart, really, really good. Okay, let's talk about your experience in the mastermind so far. What has been like your favorite aspect of being in Beyond 100K? Probably being asked the difficult questions and really made made to think what's really important. (laughs) And before I jump forward with taking action, 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 before really thinking, thinking, thinking. So Mm -hmm. Do you have an example? Yes. I mean, I I think I'm very, very detail oriented. And so I tend to think that more is better. And so my biggest challenge and learning has been learning how to say that more is not better and less, Mm -hmm. less is more and more valuable. So I'm uh, recovering, overwhelming every other one. (laughs) You know, I'm trying to you know, you're, you're into like your simplification phase of life. Yeah. Like, and so that's where I am and it's refreshing that I've, okay, I've got something that's simple. Yes. Okay, great. (laughs) Yeah. I can just hang out here and optimize that process and, you know, deliver value and almost to be like, if it doesn't happen as fast as it's, I would like it to, it's okay because I'll feel good with what I'm doing in with what I'm doing at the moment. And I'm sure I'll learn. And I think long-term it'll be better for my mind and my body and like my, my, how I feel about myself and everything that if it takes a different route and slower, then it's okay. Yeah. Well, and I think too, sometimes when we're like perfectionists and we, we like to do, we want to make a decision and then have like execute on it and have it the result right away. It is a little bit unnerving to simplify, slow down and be very purposeful, like almost, almost methodical with creating the result that you want. So that's been one of the things we've been working on together. You came into the mastermind with about a hundred ideas for a second offer. And second offers is one of, one of the options for scaling inside this group. This is a scaling group. You're not only scaling your mindset, which is the key component, but you're scaling your strategy. You're scaling your offer. You're maybe you're creating a second offer. Maybe you're hiring someone. You definitely came in with about a hundred ideas for second offers (laughs) and they kind of all work together, but they could kind of all be separated. And my advice to you was simplify. And let's make this like very easy. And also how could this help other MFR therapists? So let's tell us what you came up with. Well, as a, in my past, as a full-time PT, I always had an interest in like digital marketing stuff. So I've been learning and kind of doing that part-time since like 2019 or 2018. So, and I've always had a foot in that world all along, even though I wasn't actively, you know, working with clients, but so I wanted to find a way to still utilize what in I get enjoyment out of, which is like the tech stuff, but still be helping people and teaching people. So, but my realm of how in the weeds I could help people in terms of services and setup and ongoing thing, like it gets kind of out of control easily <laughs> in, in the circles that I follow. Cause there's always new technology. So with your help, I finally, out of the many things that I've learned, it's like, okay, here's, I think the simplest way to help people just get online and help them get get their basic bearings, you know, whether they 
have a website or not, like, okay, you need this. And this is how you make the most of this and kind of like baby steps and then put people at ease knowing that it's not really that horrible. It's mm-hmm. tell people what it is though. Cause they're probably like, just tell me what it, how, what is the thing? <laughs> <laughs> the thing um, is, you know, just getting on Google. I mean, yeah. You've simplified a process that helps people get on Google and get awesome, easy Google reviews from their clients. Yes. And I think that I'm kind of skewed because I think everybody knows what I know as a business owner, but I was coming into this community and there's a lot of people that are missing opportunity because they're not on Google or they are, but they're not using what is free to get more visibility And they're not using the word of mouth of their happy clients to help market their business. And it's awkward. It is. It's awkward to ask your customers for help with getting your word out. But it really, uh, I always think of it as you help them change their life. So I feel like, you know, if they could just do this one little thing in return, you know, it's just, it makes a big difference. And so And part of it is educating, you know, how to get on with a Google business profile, what to do to optimize it so it gets you pop up. And one of those is regularly asking for reviews on Google, responding to the reviews, how to like kind of naturally for yourself ask for the review without being awkward. Or you can still be awkward, but you'll show them how to do it. Yeah. I, you know, I kind of always tweak how I, I'm always kind of awkward actually. And that seems to work fine. (laughs) So (laughs) we're going to make it after all. (laughs) Yeah. Like it's been going fine, even though I'm stumbling each time I ask it's okay. Cause they're still very grateful. I don't know. So, yeah. So that's my second offer is um, an easy way to get Google reviews and, and then how to make your business profile optimized to get found. And then, you know, there's, there's other things after that, but that's like the first step. That's the entry, entry step. Yeah. And Angie's going to be coming in and teaching inside the foundations container, exactly how to optimize your Google listing using, using her, her techniques and her tips, which is going to be super helpful because, you know, we've got about a hundred members in there. And of those hundred members, I think people are aware of Google, but I think sometimes people have tried to get on there and there was some sort of hiccup or there was some sort of barrier. And so they quit doing it right and they're moved on to the next thing. So I think having this intensive training, you're going to be with them for an hour, lay it all out for them, how to do it. It's going to be so helpful and valuable. And those are the kinds of things we'd like to bring into the container is how can we make MFR businesses easier for one and for two more searchable so that they are accessible. Like people think access has to do with the price, but I believe access has to do with, can you find someone in your area that I don't care what your price is. If I, if there isn't in my area, I can't have access to Mm -hmm. it. So I think it's going to be really, really fun. And it's been fun just to watch you go from this kind of you know, this is just one arm of what you have available to offer people. And I think you guys listening here, I'm just going to call this now, but I think Angie DeBorgia is going to become a household name in our MFR community because she is going to be able to keep simplifying her other offers. She's probably gonna have lots of offers to give to you, but you know, you're going to want to get on her email list and follow along as she starts to release these other things that are available. I think simplifying these processes for MFR therapists will keep them in business and will help them to get fully booked. So very, very excited about this. (laughs) And for anyone that's listening, we will have the links to her. What do you call this? Google review cards. Google review cards. Okay. So Google review cards for MFR therapists, there'll be a link in the show notes. So you can, you can find those. And then what is your website? I'm sure. Can people access them from your website too? No. Okay. This is an exclusive offer for you, MFR therapists. Look at the MFR coach creating things for you guys. Opportunities. <laughs> yeah. So just access it through the show notes. And then if you're a member of the community, there'll be a direct link inside the... Yeah. It's dedicated you know, QR code card just for MFR therapists. And you can order there and it'll I'll ship it out to you. It'll also come with like a 
download with the ultimate Google review system, like what to do with your Google review, like how to manage, have a system of making the most of the reviews that you do get. I love that. That's so fun. I'm even going to get one. I I would love to increase my MFR coach reviews on Google. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to order one and have you hook me up. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. MFR therapists, if you've made 50K or more in the last 12 months, are fully booked or super close, it's time to consider joining my program Beyond 100K. Inside this six-month mastermind, you'll work closely with me and other leaders in the MFR industry to scale your mindset, the way you serve your clients, and the way you sell to your clients. And you'll also have the opportunity to scale how much revenue you create by working on a second offer or hiring another therapist to join your practice. I'll show you how. You'll have access to all my processes as well as access to other therapists who are doing these things too. The best way to grow our industry and create access is by having financially successful business owners in more places. If you are passionate about helping your clients, want to earn more money, take more time off, and be an industry leader, it's time to apply for the Beyond 100K Mastermind. Applications open October 14th through 18th. Apply in the first 48 hours and receive a private bonus one-on-one call with me upon your acceptance. Get on my wait list by going to www.themfrcoach.com and click the Beyond 100K link. Here's how it works. Step one, get on the wait list. Step two, apply in the first 48 hours so you get that bonus call with me. Step three, book your free sales call right after you submit that application and I'll personally answer all of your questions. Get on that wait list and mark your schedule to turn in your application starting on October 14th. I can't wait to see what you create and how many clients you serve when you scale your MFR business beyond 100K. What do you think the advantage of being first on Google is for someone? And is that pretty easy to attain if you use a product like your Google cards for MFR therapists? It is very helpful. Like I've kind of been really impressed. I didn't know I would get as much traffic from Google as I have And I asked people, do you mind if I ask how you how you found me? And it's Google search is like the main number one thing. Yeah. That's how I find everything nowadays. Yeah. Google everything. And so part of that is reviews. Part of it is I I did have my website redone, but I'm also posting regularly, not to expect it's going to have customers, but just to show that I'm alive and engaged with my business. So, you know, I post maybe one to three times a week on a regular basis. I think that's what I'm able able to manage. But just showing Google that like, hey, I'm open, I'm helping, I'm talking back, I'm replying, I'm saying thank you to customers for their reviews. Like, you know, you're just, they want to show value to the Google users. So the more value you can show in your online assets, the more that Google will reward you with more attention, which is higher placing. And yes, you can get into the weeds with how to get that more with your website, but you really can start very easily with just having a very optimized Google profile and, you know, showing them that you're giving them as people as much information as possible without having to leave Google. So that's even another thing too. That's really good because if once people land on Google, if you have an online booking link, you can just have that right in your Google listing. So no one has to go off of Google to get to you or can go directly to your website, which I think is fantastic. So you don't even have to have a website. You could have a Google listing with online booking link and bam, you can be top in your community. Yeah. Even yep. if you're a newer, newer therapist. Yeah. Yeah. You could, because everybody has their opinions, you know, websites are really important or websites are kind of aside, but first is the Google you don't see the website. You see the Google Maps listing for our mm-hmm. industry. With the stars or not stars next to it. Yeah. yeah. My official release near me. I'm like your your website isn't going to be in that top three. It's going to be the maps listing, which is your Google business profile listing. So that's your lowest hanging fruit for opportunity to get online. Mm-hmm. Uh, without, and that listing is free. It's really free. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's like the no brainer of how to have a a beefed up yellow pages listing for today, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Back in our generation, when we had yellow pages and we would look in there, right. It's like, people don't do, people don't do that anymore. People don't list their business there. There's nothing to be seen in those. 
Yeah, it's a very small book now, I think. Yeah, if you <laughs> even have one. Yeah, I don't I haven't seen one in years, but yeah. So I think <laughs> that's important for our community to listen to and hear is that while you might not think that you have to be online or that you shouldn't have to fuss with that, if you could turn that thought into I want people to be able to find me easiest, like in the easiest way possible. I want to be accessible. And this is how I become accessible is by having a digital footprint and being in these areas. And let's say you want to do this low budget. Google is a really, really good option. And you sh- you should start there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't should on people a lot, but I'm just going to should all over you. On <laughs> just get on there. Just do it. And I think that's a really good piece of advice. If you're listening to this podcast, like just go look and see if you are on Google. And if you are not, click the link in this podcast episode and order Angie's product and optimize your Google listing. And even if you are on Google, do that too, because there's, it's, it's a very, very valuable and very low, low ticket. Do you want to tell people how much it costs to get your product? Yeah. So my regular listing price is 57 for the card, but it's 27. Um, I want it to be very for one card. Mm-hmm. And when you get it, I'll, um, I'll send it to you with a, even a nifty little lanyard and plastic case. So you don't eat, lose it because that does happen. It's just, it looks like a credit card. Mm-hmm. And so, Oh, it, it kind of looks like this. Um, it'll mm-hmm. be, but when you get it, you just scan it with your phone and it, you fill out the form with your business information and it'll pop up like you're doing a search on Google and then um, that will activate it. So I'll activate it and let you know when it's ready to use. If it's something where you're not even on Google, then that's okay too. Just still put your business address and I'll manually connect the card to your business. I'll find your Google review thing for you. That's so nice. That's so, <laughs> it's so concierge. I love it. <laughs> so for people that are leaving, like that use this card to leave a review for your business, do they have to be a Google user or can anyone leave a review? How does that work? They do need a Google account. They don't have to be a Gmail user, but they can have a Google account. And so I do have on the checkout page, like a YouTube tutorial on how to create like an, another Google, Google account in case maybe they want to use a different name for their Google review. It's another extra step, but every now and then you might have someone that's, you know, if like they don't, their resistance. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of those people, they'll just use their wife's Gmail or their daughter's Gmail <laughs> account. And then it goes under their daughter's name. <laughs> so funny. Uh, yeah. So that's the work around for that. Okay. Well, that's nice. It's nice to have options and to be able to explain that to a client too, that maybe doesn't have a Google account or they're intimidated by it. So yes. And another thing too, is a lot of our therapists work from home and they don't have their business address shown. You can still optimize and have a really valuable listing and still ask for review. It doesn't mean you can, it's not a disadvantage to you. You can still optimize and, and help, help your business with the Google listing. That's free. That's amazing. I love that so much. Where do you see this going? Like, do you see, are you going to like offer these cards for other businesses too? Or like, how are you, how are you running this second offer? I think people would have questions about it. I have a special place for the MFR therapist and it's, I'm already in the community. So I'd, I'd love to be able to offer other online visibility services, which I'm ready to offer. I'm just kind of like, and I can, I also like the idea of helping my local community. So I sold a bunch of these to my electrician that has been Mm -hmm. doing work on our house for years. So, you know, so like, it's kind of like whatever happens with least resistance and doesn't feel icky, I guess. So whatever feels kind of fun and exciting, then I think that's the path I'll go. And then just take it as if it leads to something else next level, then great. If not, then at least they're helping their business with a one-time purchase. That's really quite reasonable. Yeah. 27 bucks. If you purchase through the link here, yeah. that's uh very, very good. I love and it. Like the next level would be of this would be something where, okay, maybe you don't want it to go right to your Google page. You want it to have a capture page where in case there's bad feedback, 
So maybe that would be on your button on your website. It's a screening page first, or have your Google reviews show on your website so that people stay on your website longer, which shows value to Google. So there's maybe you want to li- send your reviews to your whole list of 50 people from your past three years, or, you know, there's, those are kind of things that, that could be done as well. Awesome. So if someone buys one of these cards and they're like listening to the, all of these words that are coming out of your mouth and they're like, I really resonate with that. And I want all of these extra things. They could just reach out and book a call with you to have that other stuff set up. Okay. Fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Cause everybody's really different. I, you know, it's really hard to say, Oh, go. Cause like you told me, it's just too much. Yeah. I mean, you have some really good ideas and I I don't think this will be the last time we talk. So we'll say, we'll save all of the other information for the next time. But I think, yeah, like I said earlier, like Angie DeBorgia will be a household name with MFR therapists who want to get their name out there and get business recognition, who want to simplify maybe their, their onboarding system with their clients, their email systems, like all of these things are ideas in Angie's head that are actually already created. She's just trying to come up with the language of how to simplify it. So you guys will buy it. (laughs) Yeah. And that's very close. The fun part is that because I'm creating a system, I'm getting ready to officially test the system on my practice versus the patched up version I've put together over the past three years. Like I'm in the process of like, okay, I'm in, I'm installing this in mine. I got to, now I can, it's kind of nice that I'm starting with the cards because this will give me time to like really test my system because I, you know, and I'll be able to tweak it and I'll be able to be open to feedback from MFR therapists and be able to change things. So it's very much a high communication place that if you want this, then I let's, I, let me see if how I can do that and add that. to. Yeah. And I think that's like another advantage of being in inside my containers, like either in the beyond 100 K mastermind or being in foundations, because we work on these second offers together in the mastermind, and then they get released to the mastermind and foundations first before they go anywhere else. Most, most times. So there's like usually special discounts and there's like first access and trainings on how to use all of these things. So it's just a really valuable thing that we're able to do because like using the minds of the mastermind to create these second offers and then deliver them directly to the people that they can help the most. And I think it's not always that every offer that comes out of there is one that will directly help MFR therapists because like the sky is the limit of creating second offers. But so far in the two rounds we've done, like 90% of the offers do directly benefit MFR therapists. So it's really, really fun to be able to just directly take them and give them to the community and be like, here's this new thing that can help you with A, B, and C. Do you want it? There's no pressure to buy it, but it's just, it's there and available. Yeah. And I'm really thank you for your help to just really simplify the, what the offer is. Cause I feel like when you've been in something so long, you know, you get this skewed thing that, oh, everybody knows this. They probably should want more because they probably know about this already. So. Well, yeah. And when you're in all of these marketing groups and like, oh, you hear about all day is marketing, marketing, marketing. You do start to think that like everybody know, like that's just common knowledge and it's just not. <laughs> and I think we were talking the other day about the demographic, like who are the people that are doing what we do? And we've determined that it really is kind of women 40 to 70 are like the highest number of MFR therapists. So it's like, we're in our forties, we're, we're in that. And it's true, even with the people that we see in our programs, it's mostly women like 35, 40 to 70. And the thing is, is it doesn't matter if you're outside of that demographic, maybe you're a little older than 70 and maybe you're younger than 40, maybe you're in your twenties and thirties. Everyone is having the ability to get fully booked and to create six figure businesses. And I think for me, seeing a woman who's 70 years old, create her first 100 K is almost more exciting than seeing that 25 year old do it, even though like that 25 year old is going to make way more money over the course of her lifetime. But to see that woman in her seventies hit a goal like that is wow. fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause you know, the, the new things they had to learn, you know? Yeah. 
<laughs> all the obstacles that had to be overcome. And then also, I think people think, oh, I get to a certain age and like, I'm getting close to retirement. Like it's time for me to slow down. And none of this is about like hustling to that goal. It's about how can we do this in the most easy way possible? And I don't know, it's just one of those things where at the end of the day, I'm just super proud of all of the people in this these containers and what they create. And I was just musing with Meg, the co-coach earlier today, about how a hundred thousand dollars in an MFR business used to seem really like, ooh, that's a that's a big offer to make that people can make that much money seeing 20 clients or less. And then I then I came up with the mastermind that people could make 250K and take six weeks off and people are doing it. And it's like, I have to keep expanding what I believe is possible for MFR therapists so that you guys can keep achieving it without (laughs) having to work harder. And it's just wild. I'm like, I'm so glad I didn't stop at think believing hundred K was the max. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, when I saw the, the two, I was like, yeah, how can I get there? You know? I mean, as a goal, it doesn't have to be next month, next year, but just to have a, a game plan, knowing that it's going to get, it's, if I just keep on it, that, you know, that's kind of what I was looking for. Well, and you're already hitting months where on average, if you just keep going, you'll be there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Which is way quicker than you thought, right? Yes. I just am blown away. I just, I don't know. I I feel like the more I focus on getting the patient results and connecting with them, the less work it is to really attract the patients, even though that seems like totally not what would need to happen, but yeah, but that's the base of all of it, right? Is that service and connection and the results. And like when you're serving and connecting with your client and they're getting their results, everybody wants that. Yeah. And I, and then it facilitates the word of mouth without mm-hmm. you really trying because you're just wanting to help the patient. And so yeah. that's been an indirect like learning thing that what really made a difference. And I didn't know it would. Yeah. I love that. I love that you brought that up because I think a lot of people think they're going to pay for this program or pay for foundations. And like, because they paid for that, they're entitled to a hundred thousand dollar business or a $250,000 business. And that they're just going to have this roadmap, like do A, B, C, D, and E. And like, this will be your result. And it's not, not a roadmap, but really the work is in your mindset of like, how do you get into service energy versus how do I get clients to like me and buy from me? And it's like, no, how do I change the way I think about my clients and my expectations for my clients and my expectations for myself? And how do I ensure that I'm the person that can show up to give those results that are expected because they're coming to me. And I am an MFR therapist and I am highly trained and I know what I'm doing. And I use those skills instead of like, I just need people to like me and like what I'm doing and, you know, like trick them into it or whatever. Cause mm-hmm. tricking energy is just really exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And I mean, the learning of how to interact is challenging too but it you get because nobody teaches you yeah yeah (laughs) yeah you know teaching learning how to have uncomfortable conversations that's like the biggest learning process and being honest with people even though they might it might not be the news you want to be delivering I think that's kind of the biggest growth part of this of this process is getting comfortable with being uncomfortable with those conversations. And, and, you know, I've had a patient where I said, where I said, I don't know how much we'll get with your thumb, but I know that this can help. And, and um, I think she appreciated it. And then she booked eight more visits online, which I was like, totally not expecting. So it's kind of just the value of just being straight and empathetic at the same time. Mm -hmm. And not needing to fix people. Right. It's like, I don't need to fix you. I trust that this work is going to work however it is intended to work. And then we will, we will know what to do next. Yes. And whether they say okay to it 
great. If they don't, which a few have not, then it's like, okay, well, it's okay. There's someone else that's wanting to. It's definitely okay. And I think that right there is like one of the biggest learning mountains to, to climb, right? Is that it's okay if people say no. There are so many people that are going to say yes, as long as you don't quit offering it because somebody said no to you. And the people that say no, it's just a harder road to work yeah. with them too. And you so. never know too, like they may, they might be back. Like I love to say like the first person I offered coaching to was a no, and then they came back and joined foundation. So it was like years later and they're like one of the top earners in foundations. And it's just like, it gives me goosebumps knowing like, and I had that thought at the time, like, oh, I've done something wrong. Or I like, I should have said this and I should have done that. I did an evaluation though, by the way. Right. And so the next person was a yes. And they paid that was Gina. <laughs> and, and then from there, like, you know, I had lots of no's still, but I still have lots of yeses. And it's just all of that to say is you never know when that person will circle back because you took the time to be as invested in them as if they were invested in, in MFR at the time. We just don't know people's full stories or what they have going on, but we trust that they are smart enough to figure it out and to opt in when it, when it's the right. Yeah. I mean, I could have sworn she was going to finish this package and probably be like, all right, I guess I need surgery. And then they, you don't know what they're going to do. So I'm kind of learning, you know, so. (laughs) So good. So good. Well, what did you think scaling meant when you joined and what does scaling mean to you now as it relates to the mastermind? Scaling to me when I joined was I could do one or a few of five to 10 things, and maybe I could do several things at once. And those each one is something I think I would enjoy and it would challenge me. But, you know, I did somewhat pursue one or two of them and realized that those weren't the path. So scaling was like, okay, do I hire another? MFR therapist or some kind of therapist that could bring in revenue, uh, even if it was an MFR. And then, or do I do some kind of online virtual business? And what would be the most efficient way that's kind of still fun and rewarding? And so now after weeding out and, and simplifying, scaling for me is helping primarily the MFR community, because if I can do that, then we can help more people live better lives, you know, and um, I kind of, I really enjoy helping people feel empowered that they can do this. And it doesn't have to be this whole big package of this, this, and this, you know, I like to say, okay, let's just start with this and then work on that for a while. That's your homework. Like, you know, don't, do anything else, just do that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then, you know, we'll talk in a couple of weeks and you can tell me how you feel about it and, and everything. So. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I love that. That's so good. Now, when you were joining and you were thinking about scaling, I would imagine that some of this is like for revenue and for getting to a certain goal. What are your like financial revenue goals for your business long-term? I would love to be in the, you know, if I could make in past 200 easily. So I'm kind of close to that now. Yeah. Like I feel um, like that's inevitable now. <laughs> um, so I would love it to where if I could make another 30 to 50 to, or 30 to a hundred with helping people online, I would be great. And I, you know, I have an amazing virtual assistant that's been with me off and on since 2021. So I'm really investing in her to learn these things because I want it to be high tech, but high touch where you have a relationship with someone that you can, you know, get help from me, myself, or my outsourcing team that will help with the nitty gritty tech stuff. (laughs) Has it always been easier for you to easy for you to say like, I want to make a quarter of a million dollars or more a year, or is that new to you? Like to like having safety and saying like, that's something that you want. Oh, it's all new. You know, I just remember saying, I want to make 10 K 
and you know in the beginning it was like okay two to three thousand okay that's good like mm-hmm. okay four thousand okay that's good mm-hmm. and then just felt like 10k was so far away like oh, i don't know when it's gonna you know and so mm-hmm. but it it happens i mean how soon after you joined foundations did you have a 10 came up oh my gosh it was fast like it was months like i don't know i didn't it's weird and now do you have now you have like twenty thousand dollar months right yeah like And that's without your second offer. Right. (laughs) And you probably see more patients than a lot of people in the group, but how many patients is, does that average a week? I'm usually averaging like 16 to 19. Okay. Oh, that's another thing. Like in the beginning, you were seeing more than that and you've scaled it back, but haven't lost any revenue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's really important to say 16 to 19 patients, $20,000 a month. Is that accurate? Mm Mm-hmm. And you took a big vacation too, didn't you? Yeah. So we went to Portugal for a week and then I did the two classes in in Camp Verde in Arizona. So my next goal is like what I want to have six weeks off. I don't have that. So that would be nice where I can be off and not feel guilty. (laughs) How did you feel though when you took that trip to Portugal? Did you feel guilty or did you enjoy yourself? I think I I enjoyed myself. Yeah. I, you know, it was great to be away. Yeah. I think it takes practice too, like making sure you plan for vacations and, and you do it, even though you know, you're going to be a little uncomfortable about it. Yeah. That's where I am is kind of like, but like my goal is six weeks. I'm going to do it. Even if I feel like tight butt cheeks, I'm going to do it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes. Yeah. Like, oh God, I got to tell people I'm going to be off. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, but- the other aspect I love is that you also want to improve your skill level. And so it's like all of this and being in coaching and taking time off and having this really thriving business and going and continuing to improve on your skill set by going to the MFR seminars. Like that's really commendable because a lot of people would be like, I'm successful. I don't, I know it all. I don't need to do that. And I don't think that that's helpful, <laughs> right? So it's nice to be like, I'm successful and my skill set and the quality of the work that I do with these hands is very, very important to me to be varsity level at this. So yeah, I'm, I'm in the excited to repeat now. Type yeah. Thing. And so well, don't you think too, when you go to seminars and like all your financial needs are made, are met, you aren't exhausted because you aren't overworking. Like what is your experience at an MFR seminar? Experience it as that therapist, that therapist that's making 20 grand a month that like is well rested, that isn't hustling. I don't know. I don't, it's still a new thing. (laughs) So I feel like I'm like, tell me next time you go, I want you to like embody that persona of like, really reminding yourself who the hell you are and what the hell you've created and that you're not necessarily like, it's still not the normal in our community, right? Like we need people like you to, to normalize it so that more people know that they can do it too. That's why I'm so appreciative of people coming on the podcast and sharing these financial wins and these personal growth wins, because a lot of us are doing it, right? Like there's there's a lot of people doing it, but it's still so small with the size of our community. And when I go to the seminars, I, I don't really feel comfortable talking to a lot of people, so. <laughs> That's okay, I'm like that too. But I think just you experiencing the seminar though with your own thoughts about who you are, you don't have to tell anybody else, right? But it's like your experience of sitting there and being like, I make a really good living doing this. Yeah, it's just, I, wow. Like, I love my patients. I'm just, it's Did so, you ever think you'd make 20 grand a month as a physical therapist? No way. Like, I'm just, like, floored every month. You know, it's just, are you kidding? It's only the 15th and or the 13th. And it's like, you know, wow. But, you know, I'm investing a lot of it into learning the, so I'm ready for the next step. So, yeah, you're not staying stagnant. Like you're, you're in breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know you kind of go through, I mean, kind of in the spending phase of making sure things are in place, but once it's there, it's like, okay, now I can put my head to the ground 
and work on what I have. That That's kind of like where, where I'm approaching is, all right, I know what I'm going to be working with. I got to make this, make this all grow. Yeah. And you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think one thing to point out too, is like, you're actually doing less than you were prior to coaching and you're making exponentially more. Yes. Less phone calls, less, <laughs> less patience, less patient. More time off. Yeah. Just less. I don't know. It's just flowing way more since starting coaching. And so I'm um, thank you so much. It's been like, great. Well, like, it's been wow. my pleasure to work with you. It's so, it's like, I'm just like living my best life with the people like MFR therapists are my favorite people, like no surprise, but there's so ma- like, it's, there's so many cool MFR therapists out there and it, it doesn't end with like their MFR skills. Like your brains are amazing and your willingness to help people and to, you know, for those that are in my programs, like dissect these things that we talk about that no one else is like willing to talk about or dissect because they don't want to be responsible for feeling uncomfortable, right? Like, no, I don't want to feel uncomfortable. And I'm like, Hey, here's a bunch of uncomfortable soup. We're going to each take a spoon (laughs) and (laughs) we're going to dissect it ingredients and like find out why it made this flavor of soup so that we can change the flavor if we want to. And like the willingness that you guys have to do that is the difference in hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue and hundreds and hundreds to thousands of patients that you will touch over the lifetime of your business. And that's really what matters. So, all right. Well, Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate this so much. For people that are listening in today, we are getting close to or could be into the enrollment period, the application period for the Beyond 100K Mastermind. Beyond 100K Mastermind is taking applications from October 14th through the 18th. You'll fill out your application, you'll book a sales call with me, and then on that call, we'll determine if you are a great fit. The cost to join is $6,000 or six payments of $1,000. And the potential that you have from being in that group is endless. So I am so excited to meet everybody that applies and spend that time talking to you on those sales calls to get to know you to make sure you're a great fit. So visit my website, www.themfrcoach.com and click on the Beyond 100K link for more information. And better yet, go there and get on my wait list so that you don't miss the opportunity to apply. All right, Angie, everything about your contact information is going to be in the show notes. And what's your website so people can check you out and book an appointment with you? My full website is cem, like dot choice exposure marketing.com. So okay. it's, everything is on there. The whole kitchen sink is on that, but just click on schedule a demo and don't click on anything else. (laughs) We're working on making this better. (laughs) I love us for that. We don't have to be perfect. We're just going to put it out. I love it. So good. All right, everybody, we will be back with another episode of the MFR coaches podcast next week. Until then, have a great week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a minute and rate and review the podcast. I appreciate it. For more information, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram at The MFR Coach. And check out my website, www.themfrcoach.com for more information. If you are currently not working 20 hours or less and making six figures in your MFR business, I want to help you change that. Make sure you tune into the show and get on my email list so you never miss out on important trainings and information. To be the first to find out when we are enrolling next for my 12-month Business Foundations coaching program, get on that email list at www.themfrcoach.com backslash join. Inside this program, you'll learn how to raise your rate, overcome objections, and sell MFR. You'll become the MFR therapist that never under-earns and never burns out. It's up to us to make MFR mainstream, and it starts with you and your successful MFR practice. See you next week.